Welcome to the Chateau de Lalande, a 16th century chateau in the heart of France. Join us each day of Advent as we get this 19 bedroom home ready for Christmas. We'll be cooking, decorating and discovering Christmas traditions from all over the world. Welcome to Christmas at Lalande. Welcome to another day of Advent where we are gathered in the kitchen because Maria, Sabina and I are going to be doing festive cooking from each of our countries and we're going to have a snug Christmas dinner all together. You're going to be making a traditionally Danish Christmas dinner for us. Fully traditional Fully dinner, maybe not so much, just a few <laughs> elements. Yeah. Uh, okay, what are the elements? Well, um, the most important one is caramelized potatoes. I'd never heard of these until you told me. Really? You seriously put sugar with potatoes. Yes, and it's delicious. Okay, this sounds great. We definitely need this. Yeah. And what are we having it with? Um, duck. That is what you tend to have in Denmark. Yes. Yeah, and then red cabbage. Yes, this sounds so good. So we'll have to go and get that from the garden later. Yeah. Uh, before it gets completely dark this time, because I don't want a repeat of the horseradish situation. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to be cooking? I'm really excited because I'm going to do uh, Cypriot Mela Makarana, which are um, honey cookies, and they're like basically mince pies for the Greeks and the Cypriots. And you've grown up in Cyprus. Yeah, and okay. so I've grown up with actually both which is quite diabetes inducing if you have <laughs> mince pies and mela macarena sort of interchangeably. So by the end, so by, by Christmas, you're not sort of in good shape anymore. Okay, well, that's what January's for. Month. We can pull it all Absolutely. back in January. Yeah, yeah. Right, so honey cookies. Yeah. And I'm not making anything for tonight's dinner, but I'm getting ahead with the Christmas cake because I'm using a recipe that I've never used before from Delia. I usually use her classic Christmas cake, but this time I'm doing her Creole Christmas cake and we need to steep the fruit in a lot of alcohol for a whole week before making the cake so let's get started on that too. The cookies that I'm making um, there's sort of a similar concept as a semolina cake or as Amory likes to call it diabetes cake because I, <laughs> I made it during the summer. <laughs> um, so we so, can expect something sticky and sweet. Absolutely yeah and so the concept is that you make the syrup in advance you let it cool and then either if you're making a cake uh, or the cookies you take them out and you put them straight in the syrup. So that's what we're doing now. I'm doing two versions by the way because Ooh. Christmas is for everyone. One for Philip uh, without the orange and lemon peel. Okay. Because he can't have that. And yeah. for us, it was the classic combination. Lots of orange. I was really surprised. I found some real Greek honey <laughs> yes. in the pantry, which is awesome. Our guest Vasilis brought it and it is, it's amazing. Yeah, it's great and it smells amazing. So with proper Greek good, honey yeah, going in. Uh, stuff. All right, so I'm just gonna do the peel first. Oh, and immediately the kitchen smells delicious. Yeah, it smells like Christmas. We're gonna add the peel to uh, sugar and water. If you want the exact recipe, we'll have it in the description. Yes, perfect. Okay. Great, so we've got this, then we'll just quickly add a couple of cloves. Cloves are like magic. Yeah. The amount of flavor that comes from a clove. That's true. And I, what I like about these kind of cookies is that they're very, very strong on the, on the spices, and that's what mm. I like. I really don't like, you know, when people add like, a sixth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, just go you crazy. Go crazy, yeah. What's just happened over here? Don't do this at home. <laughs> we tried to put more fuel yes. into the stove and the bag was very heavy. And it melted. And it melted and yes. it kind of tore and overfilled. Um, and now we're that considering smoking, whether or not we can put the coals back in or... Any ones that are smoking and that I can't touch. They are not back in the bag. Exactly. <laughs> Can I just say that the two of you have got jumpers on that are making this entire process a lot more cheerful than it may otherwise have been. Well, yeah, I mean, with weather like that outside, we've got... Oh, yeah. need some sunshine. It's pretty miserable. Kitchen. Yours is the best, but honestly, Philip, you know how I love this jumper. Thank you. It's an Imaus classic. I actually love it. <laughs> yeah, charity shop find of the year. I sort of feel you should be in kind of some sort of 1980s catalogue. <laughs> Hello, so uh, are we going out to get a cabbage? Yes. All right, I'm getting my coat. <laughs> it's all happening. Sabina and I are going to leave the others fighting the cooker and go out. It's just a little light drizzle. I see cabbages. To the cabbage. To the cabbage and beyond. Oh, I don't know about you, Sabina. I say let them eat sandwiches and let's just go in and have a cup of tea. <laughs> Okay, this is your, your preferred cabbage. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Right. I think that you need an affinity with your cabbage, don't you? You've got to feel which one's calling to you. Uh, since this is my very first cabbage 
slaughtering and <laughs> making of then I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But okay, yeah. that looks like a great cabbage though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, you did that pretty well for your first go, I'd well, say. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that was a lot more successful than the horse cabbage. Straight to the cabbage. It was like keyhole surgery. We've returned triumphant with a cabbage. Yeah, I've boiled the syrup. This is what smells so good. Yeah, so the one that we're having with the peel, um, mm. I'm adding one um, juice of one lemon into, and then we're using the amazing honey from Crete, which makes me very ha happy because it means that we're gonna get a real flavor of the Mela Macarena. And we're gonna put about 200, 200 um, grams of this. A lot of honey. That's a lot of honey, but it wouldn't make sense to make Mela Macarena, so honey cookies without honey. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Yeah, that wouldn't, that wouldn't really make sense. And so, I mean, to me, they were just really delicious cookies, but then I read up about them a little bit. And um, they're kind of based on medieval uh, funeral trees called Macaria. We're having funeral trees I know, for yeah, dessert. I know, So. <laughs> And interesting enough, um, we have a similar thing um, in Russia, which is called kutia. The kutia is also a funeral kind what? of food that you... I'm trying to think, do we have like funeral treats in England? And all I can come up with is sausage rolls. Maybe so... the odd finger sandwich. <laughs> well, I mean, not to offend anyone, but the UK is not really known for its culinary... Oh, right, that's delights. it. Out of the kitchen, get out. <laughs> I feel quite passionate about UK food, actually. Yeah. I genuinely really love I it. Think, I think maybe when it's done well with like proper ingredients... Proper roast dinners with yeah. gravy and beef dripping yeah. and pies. We make the best pies in the world in England. I come from Russia. We make amazing pies. You actually made a great pie, yeah. yet, so I can't I argue with you on that. Of it. <laughs> How about Yorkshire puddings? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, good. Yeah. I don't think that you can just an entire nation's cuisine on the fact that they don't do funeral treats. Uh, I don't think that's <laughs> the only reason I've, I've said what I've said. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> I just need the help uh, from a strong Russian woman. Because I can't. <laughs> You got your knife stuck. <laughs> Hang on, a strong Russian woman is quite busy with her syrup, so I can come and help if you like. I can do this. I've got this. I feel like I got, like, I help you, obviously, because I got a big... Uh... You did, without you, I couldn't have done it. Oh, good. Thank you. There we go. Okay. See? Yay. Okay, over to you. I am going to get on with Christmas cake. My trip to Barbados this year has inspired me to go off piste and for the first time make the Creole Christmas cake, for which I appear to need rum, brandy, cherry brandy, and port. Oh, and Angostura bitters. So let's get all that together now. Starting with the rum, which is sort of the basis of the Creole Christmas cake. And I brought this rum all the way back from Barbados. And I'll tell you a lot more about it in the video when I actually make the cake, but this is just the pre-cake making of the cake. Um, which is also going to smell really good. So we need three tablespoons of this, three tablespoons of brandy while well, we're in France, so I'll be using Armagnac, three tablespoons of cherry brandy, which we're really lucky we actually have. We often don't have this one here in France. And I only need three tablespoons of this entire bottle, so we better start having ported cheese every night. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that'd be popular in my house. <laughs> One and a half teaspoons of Angostura bitters. Cocktail corner. Right. So I've prepared my my four separate mixes. So th Ooh. these are Philips and okay. these are ours. So I realize this looks like a lot of oil. But um, That's oil! Yeah, so that's a wow. mixture of oil, orange juice, um, cognac and orange zest for us. It looks like a lot, but I am doing a recipe sort of for a standard Greek family. So, okay. So we're talking like 37 cousins, you know. Excellent. Yeah, Good. about like 100 people. That should but, be about right for the six of us. Yeah, but the beauty of this recipe is that it's uh, dairy-free and egg-free, and it will keep for like a month. So we're making one Great. big batch. We'll be okay till Christmas. Yeah, and we'll, we, can, we can have them all throughout. Let's be eating them before. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Are you planning that the Philip lot will be gone? I mean, she's saying that it's for like 37 cousins, so... Like, yeah, it's one fillet. Yeah, yeah, fair yeah. enough. <laughs> I can hear just the rustling of Oreos behind me. Busted. Like what? <laughs> no, good, thanks. <laughs> I love the fact that Philip is eating cookies whilst he <laughs> prepare his cookies. I mean, it is Advent and more is more. 
I've never seen such a wet mix. Oh, look at this double whisking. Yeah, I know. Maybe not ideal. I should have done it one by one. I hear that I'm laying the table tonight. Here we have a All champion right. table layer. <laughs> and you're busy doing caddo this evening. Have you decided which plates I should use? This is a big decision. Well, actually, not so much the plates, but I was more thinking of like the terrines. Ah, you went straight in with the terrines. And I don't think we've ever used those. Ooh. Mummy's Royal Worcester ones, right up at the top. Yeah, we haven't done that in the kitchen before, I don't no. think. So I've prepped our rolling station. Yeah, well, I think the best thing you prepped is we've worked out how to solve the problem of having to open the entire bottle of port for only three tablespoons. Absolutely. I this was so. you, wasn't it? It's very clever. <laughs> yeah, and she's offered to help me roll the cookies, which is great because we've got quite a lot of dough yes. to get through. Like this? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Straight away, perfect. first time. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll do different designs so that we know which ones are which. And then we bake them for about 25 minutes. Once we take them out, dunking them in the syrup. Mm, that's the bit I'm looking forward yeah. to. Speaking of dunking, whilst that's going on, I'm going to be putting all of the fruits into the alcohol. And this is the bit I'm looking forward to. We had one little issue. I have spent the last half an hour trying to locate the fruits that I knew I'd bought. We found them in the pasta bin in the end. So finally got there, but I forgot to buy the prunes. I do, however, have prunes in Armagnac. What could possibly go wrong adding these instead? Surely that's only gonna make things better. So in here I've added raisins, currants, a citrus peel, glacé cherries. There's a whole, what can only be called potato making factory going on yep. over here now. Now I've gotta put the prunes in now. To be fair, Delia says no soak prunes. And the one thing we can say is that these are not going to need soaking. That is actually looking good. Okay, I have to simmer this now. But first, you're doing exciting things with your not potato potatoes. Yeah, so I've realized that they do kind of look like potatoes, but <laughs> there we go, that's your visual sort of reference. <laughs> so um, with Sabina's help, we've rolled all of them. Yes. These are Phillips, and just so that we can differentiate, mm. I've pricked them a little bit with a fork, and here I'm doing the little scores with a knife. Nice. And then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just bake them for about 25 minutes and we'll be ready to soak them. Great, so I'll get simmering this then. We need to see things going into the oven. And I'm just putting the last of the nutmeg on. I think this is going to be a really good cake with all of those delicious things in. And honestly, I have never put so much alcohol into a cake at the early stage. So I usually feed the cake a lot. And this one can be fed, but can also, crucially, be made closer to Christmas. Because I started it quite late this year, I usually like to make it over a month in advance, and then I feed it every day with armagnac or brandy. And this time I thought I would try this one, A, because I was in Barbados and I wanted to use rum, and B, because it doesn't need so much feeding because the alcohol goes in in advance. I love being in this kitchen with you two. It feels super festive and Christmassy. Yeah, I love the communal feel because this is what I was really looking forward to because Christmas by my house is really confused and sort of half-hearted and quite isolated. Is that because you're a Russian family in a Cypriot Yeah, so household. all my relatives are back in Russia. So yes. it's just me and my parents. And then we're kind of combining all the different celebrations mm -hmm. and it's all a little bit of a mess. So it's a different every year. It's not like these set traditions that um, I think you and Sabina have. And yeah, we have set traditions, but actually what's nice here is we get to try each other's traditions. Yeah, exactly. It's, I love it's, that. It's really, it's really great. Yeah, it's yeah. part of part of festive Christmas, I think, is learning about how other people celebrate and most importantly, tasting the food that they celebrate with. Definitely. Well, this is me, a Russian woman making Cypriot cookies in France, <laughs> so... It's quite, yeah, that's very exactly. loud. Yeah. Okay. The moment we have all been waiting for in the house has yeah. arrived. Admittedly, they do look rather potatoey, but I mean, that's all right. As you can see, I've already done Philips. Okay. So I'm dipping these um, directly from the oven so into, they're still warm yeah so they're like very very hot so yeah, they're so delicious why isn't there smell o vision <laughs> and then we just leave them to absorb all of the syrup and so when are we first allowed to taste them in maybe like an hour an okay. hour and a half so yeah and and the way to serve them is um for the traditional ones sprinkling walnuts um, mm. all over them uh, but also what you can now get in uh, bakeries and what I'm doing for Philips is um, they're either drizzled with uh, chocolate or completely covered in chocolate. So dunked in, mm. dunked in um, duck chocolate. Yes. Which is also quite nice. Oh, that sounds so, so good. So we'll have both. Oh, great. Because this is mummy's dinner service from the 80s, I'm going quite retro with the whole table. Little cone-shaped nap 
napkins at each place. Then we have red wine, white wine is chilling there. And I'm just gonna bring down the serving dishes from the top. I arrived at the perfect moment, haven't I? Yes. There is sugar going into a pan, and for me, this is an absolute first. I've never seen sugar and potatoes in the same pan. Melt the sugar, then put in the butter. Make a little, like, so it's kind a of- A little coffee, caramel. Yeah. And potatoes, and then just- Okay, so now you're just caramelizing them. Yes. I've got everything into my jar, and Maria came up with the genius idea of why not just pour a little more alcohol over it whilst it's sitting for a week? Top that up, and that is going to sit in the fridge for one week. Well, this is going to be good. So part two of the Christmas cake making will be in the advent calendar next week. And I'll also tell you a little bit more about the rum that I've used then. That looks so good. Okay, what else do we have? Yes, we have Sabina's amazing the potatoes. potatoes. I'm very excited about that. And here, gravy. Gravy. And the cabbage. Oh, yes, yes, what a meal. And more potatoes of in course, this one. Potatoes, of course, potatoes. of course. And now the crucial addition to any meal at Lalande. And the other thing that we cannot be without in France is bread. Can one put gravy onto the caramelized potatoes? Yes. Yes, that's allowed? Yeah. Great. So it's good to feel we're having a little taste of Denmark tonight. <laughs> before moving on to Cyprus in a strange geographical meal. I know I've said it before, and I know I'll get a stick for it, but I think this is my favorite meal. Oh, it's so delicious. Everything is your favorite, but this is my favorite food. Really. <laughs> if it's ridiculously good, no, it's it? it is amazing. Thank you. I would like to thank my mother. <laughs> My friend M. Cheers to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, this looks so, so good. And it smells delicious. Yeah, it smells like Christmas to me. Yeah, it yeah. does smell like Christmas. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not soggy. It's delicious. They're the best things ever. I really thought they'd be soggy. And they're not. The semolina keeps them really dry and crumbly. Yeah. But they're so they're soft. delicious and spiced and perfect. But for the true Maria experience, which we can't sadly recreate right now, but we've got plenty of the cookies to, to go through. <laughs> so you'd have a mince pie in your right hand and a mel macarono in your left. And you sort of bite into cheese. Oh, I like cream, this. And then sort of fall back into like a comatose state. Okay, well actually Dan said that he would come and cook one day and make mince pies. Yeah. So as long as we keep some of these aside, we can do the full Maria Christmas experience. Absolutely. Yeah. We're going to do it. Wonderful. This is a new Christmas tradition at Lalande. Oh. And if anyone wants to make it, the recipe will be in the description below. Okay, so we have learnt Merry Christmas in Danish and Greek. in Greek, because obviously this is the Danish Cypriot meal uh, for Christmas <laughs> at Lalande. From Lalande, Glamour Yule. And Carla Christiana. Say allos. Are you proud? Yes, very. Good.